from flooding to the 2019 budget. I sat down exclusively with Charleston City Council member Bill Moody for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on the free Quentin's Close-Ups iHeartRadio podcast. Councilman Bill Moody, it's so good to see you. Good to see you. Merry Christmas. Likewise, two weeks away. Yeah, getting close. <laughs> but there, is no, there are no gifts coming to City Hall because there's so many issues going on right now. But this might be you. Well, it's uh, that time of the year. Uh, we got budgets, which are always, uh, you know, we have to have them in place before the end of the year. So we've had uh, a lot of time working on those since really about May, right. working on different aspects. And so we did all of that or got most of the general fund stuff done. We've got the hospitality budget and the um, stormwater budget uh, on the 18th. So still got some work to do. And then we've had this Davis and Floyd uh, uh, bomb dropped on us uh, last week. I I was just reading this last night. It's confusing to a lot of people. Doesn't make sense to some people. When you looked at that memo, what, where did your mind go to? Well, um, we started out several years ago. When I first got elected, that project in 2011 was just kind of getting started. It was a $154 million project to solve the drainage in that whole basin, and mostly the Septim Clark uh, runs right through that basin. So, you know, it started about the time I was elected, and um, everything seemed to be going well, going well. Uh, the funding kind of uh, caused us to have to break that project into phases. If I mean, I think we could have been would have been better off uh, if we would had one contract for one hundred and fifty four million dollars. But because the SIB, uh, the State Infrastructure Bank, wanted certain things, and the Tiger Grant that we got, it had to be done within two years, so we, you know, we couldn't take the whole time on that tire grant. We had, so that was kind of the beautification part of it. It caused us to change our, our methodology uh, in some respects. So, uh, but the first really three phases um, are going along fine. They're going to be, they're going to be okay. The third phase, uh, phase I think is about 70% complete. And so they started working on stage four or phase four and phase five. And um, as they started uh, engineering those pieces, um, they said, whoops, we got a problem. The cost has gone from uh, 154 up to 197, but about 7 million of that is, uh, when we got in there, we found out that there was some uh, uh, utilities, basically water and sewer, that had to be moved. And even though we included that as part of our contract, the Charleston Water Systems had reimbursed us about seven million. So it's really about a hundred, you know, take seven off of the one ninety seven. So, so it's about thirty six, but, but it's still a big number. Yes, indeed. You talk about that methodology. How do you define it now? How do I define it now? Yes. Well, it is what it is, Quentin. I mean, we've got to live with the decisions that were made. Uh, in order to get that funding, we had to make those decisions. So uh, I'm not going to uh, look at that. If we could, I mean, we applied for a grant for the whole thing to, to do it uh, with that the SIP, but we weren't successful. We got pieces to do different pieces of it, so we had to break it down to do those pieces. Um, but now we've got to uh, fund this overage, which is uh, somewhere around $36 million, I think, is the, is the final number. And, and there, there, have, it's, there have been some enhancements in this, and I, I'm, that's part of my confusion. Um, if, you, if you're going to buy a Chevrolet and somebody decides, well, you're better off with a Cadillac, and you put that into your budget, that'll cause it to be over. Um, I don't know that we need a Cadillac. Maybe the Chevrolet would be just fine. If that's, and, and that has not been explained to my satisfaction as to how much those enhancements are and whether or not 
their worth the dollars. I mean, you buy a Cadillac, you're going to get certain stuff, you know, and if that's what you need, then you're better off to make that decision. But at this point, I have not received an explanation of which one I need. And so that's what the engineer told us last night in our workshop is that several enhancements in this thing. Mayor made a point, we've got three pump stations that'll be in that. And those things will pump, I don't know, how many thousands of gallons of water a minute. And we, uh, I mean, let's just say it's 100, 120 gallons a minute. But we got a pump station that's doing about 40, 50, thousand gallons a minute and it seems to be doing fine so do we need all of those because basically what happens is you have to have that capacity when it's high tide uh, when it's low tide uh, the water some of it will flow out somewhat naturally so you don't need all that so do we need all that pump capacity so those are some of the questions I know we've had some discussion of do we need to have maybe another uh, outside engineering firm to, to kind of review this whole thing and give us their opinion. I mean, I, I, I think the people at Davidson Floyd are good good folks. I don't suspect there's any any shenanigans going on here. I think we've just got a problem we've got to look at. I want to go to that memo because one of the questions they sent to the mayor as well as city council is this. What was the original scope and timeline of the project? And their answer is this. The original scope of the project was to provide substantial improvements to drainage, mobility, efficiency, emergency preparedness, and community livability within the string and fish barn drainage basins. Can you tell me how will the mobility, efficiency, emergency preparedness, and community livability be in, say, 2024? How will it be? Well, if we don't get this project finished, it's going to be about like it is today. Um, and, and so that, that really goes back. That was the original $154 million contract, one contract. And, and it, it started out trying to fix just the crosstown of the Septima Clark. And we said, well, we can't really fix that unless we bring the whole basin in. So we expanded it rather than just a road improvement to that whole basin improvement. And so that's what that was the original concept, but then when we applied for the money, we didn't get it, and so we got some money, so we had to start breaking it down into phases, and that's kind of what, I mean, that was the original con concept. And in order for you all to get the entire money. Right. Okay. Right. And as the, and they also said this, too, as the design and permitting of the project was completed in 2009, there had been no funding secured or identified for construction. So where was the money? Well... That was, that was the initial planning process was how much is it going to cost, okay? So then once you get that, in other words, you got to decide what the scope of it, how much you're going to do, what it's going to look like, and then you got to go find the money. So that was back in the early stages of it. That was why they, they came up with the 150. Okay, let's go find the money. And we found... Um, uh, I think it was about $110 million pretty quick from some federal money and some civ money. And so we had to do the rest of it. So, but that was, we didn't have any money when we first started. We had to, I mean, you got to know what you want before you go to apply for the money. So that was really what we were doing. And we were disappointed that, uh, from what the engineer said, was that we didn't get the funding for the whole thing up front. We just got pieces of uh, I think President Obama may have, you know, the shovel ready oh, yeah. uh, projects that he was talking about. And that was part of what we got was some of that shovel ready stuff. And also, let me go to this too. Uh, the question, another question that is, has this project always been separated into four divisions? And yes, they say during the course of the project design in 2009, four divisions of work were identified based upon spe special nature of work associated with each. Division one, as you mentioned, tunnels and shafts. Division two, pump station, wet well, and outfall. This is division three, collection system, and division four, pump station. Yeah. What else should have been separated to your mind? Well, I, I, look, I'm no engineer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I just, I, I'm kind of a numbers man. <laughs> I'm looking at how the numbers work. I, I can't design the, 
Uh, I mean, I know that when you look at that, there was pump stations right. in one area and pump stations. The, the last pump station is the building that is going to be between the two Ashy River bridges right. that'll be, you know, they'll actually contain the pump stations. And that'll be the, all the water will come down in that. There'll be some pump stations that will, you know, I think the first one was to bring the water down there. But that last step was once all that water gets there, we've got to pump it into the river. And so that's that's where I was talking about a little minute ago with 120 gallons per minute. And there's going to be like three of those. And it's a lot of water that will be pumped out of that. Wow. And between the time that you guys met for, I believe, the committee, Ways and Means Committee meeting? It was the first meeting, yes. That to, was Tuesday the 3rd or 4th, wherever that day was. To now, what more questions do you still have? Uh... You know, we got a pretty good briefing uh, last night from the engineers and some of our staff. Uh, I mean, to me, the, the huge question is, how are we going, where are we going to get the money to finish this project? I mean, we have spent uh, a lot of money. And right now, we got holes in the ground that are going to hold water. And, and that water just can't stay there. It's going to get full. <clears throat> and as soon as that happens, you know, they almost become useless. So we've got to be able to pump it out, and we've got to have it all connected. And so you know, we, we've got to finish it. So the question in my mind is, okay, what's our process for? What are those enhancements that we can maybe cut back on that we, um, uh, that we don't need, that we can do without? I mean, it'd be nice to have, but we can do without it. Uh, how much of that can we... Uh, that onion can we kind of skin back and do without and then what's that number and then how do we pay for that and when you look at the 2019 budget what else would you put in or take out if you could right now well I'm look there's always some tweaking that uh, if you and I sat down and talked about a budget you would have some preferences that that maybe I wouldn't have and I would have some that you wouldn't have but at the end of the day uh, there's a lot of small stuff in there that I would certainly, I could live without. Um, but there were there were several principles that that we needed to do, or, or things that we needed to accomplish in 2019 that we just couldn't wait on. Number one, we've got a lot of growth out on Johns Island. We've got a lot of growth in the Cane Hoy area. Um, we don't have fire equipment in those areas and they're growing and growing and growing. And so we need to, we need to build two fire stations in, in those two areas next year and we need to staff them. So that's one demand that we have to, we have to meet. Another one is our non-sworn employees. So we got sworn as police and fire. And, and we dealt with them last year. So all of these non-sworn employees have not had a real raise. And when we looked back in the summer at, at our HR reports, in that non-sworn area, we had an 18% turnover rate. That's a lot of turnover. And we were losing people to other municipalities around here in the county uh, just because they were paying, you know, another dollar an hour or something, you know. That these people, these are the lowest echelon of the, of the city employees, and these people had not had a raise. And we, when you've got an eighteen percent turnover rate, I mean, nowhere in the budget does it say cost of turnover, but you have training and and all the other efficiencies that that go on when you've got that kind of a turnover rate. And so we had to give. Um, those employees uh, an increase in salary. So all of the non-sworn non employees are getting an increase. And then we had a debate. We didn't have quite enough money to pay for that. And so the mayor wanted to put the, the rate in on July the 1st. Okay. And that became the debate. Do we do it January 1st or do we do it July? The mayor said, well, we can't do it without a tax increase. And most of us said, well, if you're going to put it in July, you're going to have to have a tax increase at some point to pay for it, you know, unless you're going to take the raise back in January and only give them a half a raise or 
So anyway, the debate became, do we go ahead and raise it and raise the taxes? And uh, I supported raising the taxes to give up, because I thought it was important that we start cutting into that 18% and, and, and compensate those people at an adequate level. And so that kind of became the controversy. In the end, I think it was 11 to 2. Uh, most of us voted for that as the right way to do it. So we, you know, it's not that we, I mean, we just have a different philosophy. I mean, I, uh, I've told the mayor, in my, in, in my world, I, I made kind of a joke. I said, you know, from a, I said, I guess that's just the difference between a way a bookkeeper and a, and a, and a piano player looks at finances. But um, I just don't think we can give raises if we don't have a way to pay for them. And that's, that was kind of the difference. And I mean, you know, he was, you know, he, he finally voted the way we saw it. And, you know, when I go back to the Davis and Floyd memo, uh oh. <laughs> If something like this were to happen again in the future, God forbid, what would you guys, what steps would you guys take to prevent something like this from happening? Well, and, and that's really one of our concerns, to be honest with you, Quinn. And I know several of us have had a, a conversation around that. We need to understand why this went wrong. I mean, we've done, uh, I mean, we built a $700 million Ravenel Bridge under budget, under, you know, time. This is only 150 women. We've, this is one of our largest projects, but we've done Meeting Street, we've done East Bay uh, in Calhoun, we've done uh, uh, Ardmore, we've done a lot of projects and we've done them well. Why did this one go wrong? The Market Street it hopefully is on target to be, and so we needed this reporting process to be sure that we understand what went wrong here. Like I said earlier, I'm not expecting any uh, any shenanigans were going on. I think this was maybe some bad planning, timing, and uh, we need to understand that so that we don't make that mistake again because we got Calhoun West we got to do, we got a project on Windermere we got to do, we got uh, Church Creek we got to do. I mean, we got a lot of projects that we've got to accomplish, and if we don't understand where we, uh, you know, we need to learn from our mistakes and, and be sure we don't repeat them. So that's what we're trying to figure out. How was the communication? Well, um, that's that's one of the questions that several of us have. Is I mean, we we've uh, if there's four people in that chain, two of them are no longer with the city. So I want to know why they left. Did they already know this? And we weren't informed. What's what's going on here? Or were the, was the information not coming up the, the chain to, to get to council? We quite literally last, in our last city council, Ways and Means, it was on our agenda. And I could produce my little iPad where I've got question marks the way I do my getting prepared. And I didn't understand then. There were three items on the agenda that were kind of at the end of the Ways and Means that we had all these budgets we were talking about. And it was to approve these phase four contracts. And, um, and I just didn't understand, and so I asked the question. They said, I know, I'm being told we've got a $30-something million dollar shortfall, and, um, and everybody, and I looked around the chambers, and everybody else's jaw was on the table, too. So we just didn't know about it, and that's, that's, that's a problem. Describe to me the following one word, the plastic bag bang. Um, feel good. A uh, little old battery. Uh, Got to do it. Flooding. Flooding. Number one priority in the city. Are you running for mayor? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I am running. If you want, I'll say it here on Clinton's close up. I am running for re-election for city council for District 11. Wow. I'm up next year. Up yes. Next year. So, so I'm going to run, but I. Uh, I, I'm too old for that job. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a great career, Quentin, and, and I love this aspect of my public service. It's just continuation, and uh, it's been an honor to serve, and, and I think I've got another good four years. we got a lot of projects going on, and, and I've now developed some history and some uh, um, some credibility with my colleagues that I think is very helpful to uh, whoever is the mayor. and. Uh, you know, the, those of us that try to make the city a better place. And, you know, we, we have a lot of controversy. I mean, we've got a lot to do West Ashley and west of the peninsula that 
we've got that revitalization underway. We, we, we started taking some baby steps over there, but we've got to accelerate that. Uh, I don't know, we've, we've talked, uh, we've got some funding in this new budget for a wellness natatorium over the Citadel Mall area, hey. $2 million. Uh, we think that uh, if, if, if we can get that project and find the right piece of land and buy that, that that may accelerate um, I mean, it's, it's going to be, the, the natatorium itself won't be much of a public-private partnership, but if we can put that piece of infrastructure in, it is a perfect marriage to what Richard Davis and his uh, team are doing over the Citadel Mall, what, they, what their vision for that whole area is. It, and it could accelerate, um, in my opinion, it could accelerate the development of that TIF, which would produce the money to enhance Sam Rittenberg, get those sidewalks, get get all that stuff uh, fixed up over there and kind of cause that whole project uh, to take off. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening over at West Ashley. Medical University just announced they're going to have, a, in the next couple of years, they're going to have about 2,000 employees uh, in that Citadel Mall area, in the South Park, and actually in the J.C. Penney, they're going to have about 500 employees in there. And that's going to be an outpatient clinic that uh, a lot of people, rather than having to come downtown and clog the streets, will be able to go over there to West Ashley, um, and you won't have all those employees necessarily going downtown. So by doing it that way, we're, we're giving some relief to the parking and the traffic and everything downtown. So if you've got 500, <clears throat> they do outpatient surgery, all kind of diagnostic testing, MRI, stuff like that over at the old uh, J.C. Penney building there, and it'll take about 18 months to get that. They've already got, I don't know how many employees in that south, that tower over there at South Park. But they're, between the two, the, the doctor in charge that said they're going to probably have about 2,000. So if we can uh, capture that and have a wellness center for those folks and other people coming over that area for the, um, uh, there's just a lot of aspects of that. Uh, uh, as far as the aquatics, uh, that's a huge, uh, that fits in kind of with Mr. Davis's uh, idea of having uh, a venue over there where you can have these club sports like, I mean, cheerleading, ping pong, basketball, volleyball. I mean, you just name it. And these families coming in, I know in my case, I've got a grandson, actually a second grandson now that's starting down that path. That's a, uh, a swimmer, year round swimmer. And uh, my son calls it a thousand dollar a weekend habit that, uh, that he and his mother go, you know, Tupelo, Mississippi, Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Greensboro, right. Greenville, right. Columbia. I mean, every weekend they're swimming in these tournaments. And what I didn't understand until, you know, fairly recently that not only is it swimming, but it's basketball and cheerleading and volleyball and just all these different sports that these club sports that people participate in. Uh, and so what that does is that creates, you know, it, it fills up the hotel rooms over there. It creates the opportunity to have more good restaurants uh, and, you know, 2,000 Mount of University um, employees and their patients coming over there to eat and work out or do whatever. I mean, it creates a synergy that could cause that whole thing to uh, to really uh, explode over there in terms of a business center of West Ashton. So we think this is a, a, a key a cog in that wheel. So. We're going to be pushing on that. So there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of fun to work on, not just over overages and budgets and stuff like that. That's a, <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Never a dull day in Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> well, Councilman Bill Moody, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Glad to do it, Quinn. Anytime. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Good to see you. You too.